Okay, today we'll be talking about the unit tangent factor, the unit normal factor, and the binormal factor. All three together, we can get the TMB frame, and that's also called the Fernet frame. Check this out. First, let's say we have a curve in the space given by the vector function R. Let's start with the unit tangent factor. So as you can see, we want a factor to be tangent to the curve. Let's say we are going to focus on this point right here. And I'm just going to draw a tangent factor, let's say something like this. And we want to make sure that the factor is a unit factor, meaning that this length has to be 1. And the notation for this right here is just capital T. Now, T is defined to be the derivative of R with respect to S. And the S is the arc length. So we have to consider the small change from here to here, how long that takes. It's kind of like Calc 1 that when you have a curve, if you have the slope of the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line is dy dx. But what's dx? The x is a small change in the x, right, in the x-axis. But in the Cauchy 3 situation, it wouldn't make that much sense. You really have to consider the change of the arc, right? And in fact, a lot of things will be defined with the arc lengths in Calc 3. All right, good. But unfortunately, if you have a factor function in terms of t time, then in that case, this right here wouldn't be so useful. But it's okay because we can do the following. Have a look. The top, we have dr. Let's just go ahead and divide it by dt. And then for the bottom, we have ds. Let's just go ahead and divide it by dt as well. Now, what's the top? We have the derivative of the position with respect to time. That will give us the velocity. Yes, so let me put that down. dr dt is the velocity, and this is still a factor. How about the bottom though? ds dt. Well, the s is the r length, which kind of tells you the total distance you travel from here to maybe here, and then divide it by time. That will give you the speed. So ds dt is the speed, and the speed is the magnitude of the velocity factor. And because we know the velocity is just the derivative of r, we can put that right here as well. So now, you can write it like this. If you keep the top as dr dt, then of course I will recommend you guys for the bottom just write it as the absolute value of dr dt as well so that it can match the input, which is very nice. But if you want to write the top as the velocity, then make sure that you also write it as the magnitude of the velocity. So you match the input. And have a look. We have the factor divided by its magnitude, so for sure we know this right here is a unit factor. So we're done for that. Next, let's talk about the unit normal factor. Right, normal means orthogonal or perpendicular. All three words, they mean pretty much the same thing. So, we want a factor that's normal to t. How can we make that happen? Well, we know that t is a unit factor, meaning that the length is always going to be 1. And by one of my previous video where I showed you that, if we have a factor with constant length, then we can say, its derivative is normal to the factor itself. So here, we use capital N for the normal factor. And in this case, N will be like this. It's pointing toward the inner part of the Conte side, like that. So it's not the outside. So this right here is the N. Just keep that in mind. And one way to remember it is you can use the right-hand rule. The index is the T. And then the middle finger is the end. So the end will be pointing to there, right? T and N. And then the T is going this way because we have the curve oriented this way. 
All right, so n will be defined to be, first we need its derivative with respect to s, right? with respect to s, just like how this was defined at first. But now here's a quick question for you guys. T is a unit factor. Can we be sure that the derivative of a unit factor is also a unit factor? Well, the answer for that is no. This is just a factor. We cannot say if this is still a unit factor or not. But don't worry, because we can just divide it by its magnitude. Then we can make sure that this right here will be a unit factor. But if you take the absolute value of this, what's that though? Well, that will give us the curvature. Curvature kappa is defined to be the magnitude of the derivative of t with respect to s. So right here, if we just divide it by the curvature kappa, then we can be sure that this right here is going to be a unit factor. But again, we don't want to have ds, right? It's okay, we can do the following. Check this out. On the top, I'm going to write down dt ds. On the bottom for the curvature is just the magnitude of that. So the input match, which is quite nice. Now, check this out. I really want to have d little t for the time. What we can do is the chain rule. The top right here, I will have dt, but let's just go ahead and divide it by d little t. And then right here, we multiply by d little t with respect to ds, chain rule. On the bottom, we are going to do the same thing. We have the magnitude bar or the absolute value bar. dt divided by dt and then multiply by dt divided by ds. Cool. Now you can see that dt ds, dt ds, they are the same. We want it to cancel out, but we have to do it carefully. First, though, know, the magnitude of the product, it's the product of the magnitude. So I can write it down like this. This right here equals, the top stays the same. dt, dt, and then dt, ds. Over, right here, we will have the magnitude of dt, dt, and then the magnitude of ds, uh, sorry, dt ds. But what's dt ds? This right here is just the reciprocal of that, right? The reciprocal of the speed. But by definition, the speed in this case is always positive, not even zero. Because if you look at how the arc length is defined, it, as long as we have a smooth curve, then the speed is always positive. So not only we can drop the magnitude bar for the absolute value bar, but also we can cancel this and that. So I'll just show you guys that this right here, by this, drop the absolute value bar, but I'll write down everything again for you guys. dt 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 ds over magnitude dt 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 ds, and then drop these two things. So finally, we get dt dt, which is nice, because the bottom is just the magnitude of that, dt, dt, all right? So I will box this right here. This is what you should be using for getting the unit normal factor. And right here, perhaps I'll box this right here for you guys. Or if you prefer, you can also use this one. Now, finally, we will be talking about the binormal factor. So this means a factor that's normal to both this and that, right? And you can use the right-hand rule. Here is t, the index is the t, the middle is the n, and the b, the binomial factor, is the thumb. So t, m, b, like this. And you can rotate whichever way that you prefer. So in this case, I will just try to draw this for you guys that this is the n. No, sorry, this is the b. It's like t, n, b, like that. If you look at this 3D, it's hard for me to draw 3D, so hopefully this kind of makes sense. 
but use the right hand rule. Uh, trust the right hand rule, not the picture. Okay, so we want a factor that's normal to both this and that. How can we do so? Well, one way to do it is just take the cross product of it. So our factor B is defined to be T cross N. T cross N in that, in that order, T and B, right? Now, here's a quick question for you guys. This is a unit factor, that's also a unit factor. Can we be sure that B is also a unit factor? Well, not all the time. The, product of two unit, the cross product of two unit factors might not be a unit factor. But in this case, yes. So I will write this down right here for you guys. This is also a unit factor, but why? Well, we will just have to check the magnitude, right? So if you take a look at the magnitude of B, which is just the magnitude of T cross N, and by the definition of the cross product, this right here is equal to the magnitude of the factor T, regular multiplication with the magnitude of the factor N, but we will have to multiply by sine of the angle in between them. But what's the angle in between of T and N? T and N, they are normal to each other, so it's 90 degrees. So in fact, this right here, I'll just write this down here for you guys. Theta is 90 degrees because our factor T is normal I'll uh, just say T and N are orthogonal. Orthogonal. So we have 90 degrees. Yeah? And what's the sign of 90 degrees? 1. And this right here is what? Because it's a unit factor, so it's 1. Likewise, this is also going to be 1. So all in all, this is just. 1 times 1 times 1. So of course, the length of the binomial factor is also 1. So that's why this is also a unit factor. So we have three unit factors. They are all normal or orthogonal to each other. With that, you can get the new frame. It's called the T and B frame. And in the next video, I'll show you guys how to compute the T and B. That's it.